An interesting question came up on the Git Reddit page that I wanted to take a look at. So this person is asking how they can make their current Git workflow a bit more efficient. And the situation that they're dealing with is they've got a long running main branch that has, in this case, commits A, B, C, D. And at the point of commit C, they've checked out their own branch and started doing some work. And this is a pretty common flow for doing some feature work. You create this, your own local feature branch, you do some work. Maybe you push that branch up and create a PR from it on GitHub. But as you're working, uh, other people on your team come along and they create commits like this commit D and those get integrated into the main branch. And now your branch is a little bit out of sync with the main branch because you're missing some of the latest commits. And so the question from this person is, um, how do I go about getting my feature branch up to date with the main branch? And what they describe themselves doing here is getting the latest from the main branch, creating a whole new uh, branch, copying and pasting their work over into that new branch, and then pushing that up and creating a new PR. And while that will certainly work, I think that they're right in wondering, is there a more efficient way to do this? Because there is. And so we are going to take a look at just that. So I've created something called a Git Playground. It's just a repository I'm going to play around with Git stuff. And so I've got some uh, initial commands here that I can run in my terminal that are going to set up the repo. And yeah, let's see. So it's going to create a readme. So I, I may need to dive into the folder where this is. OK, so I'm going to make the Git Playground, and I'm going to cd into that. And now I'm going to copy these commands and then run them. OK, great. I think everything ran. And if I say ls, we've got the readme there. If I print out the readme, we can see that that's there. And then if I jump back here and refresh this page, we should see that we have a readme existing now with Git Playground. OK, that's great. I'm going to add one more commit in here. So I'm going to open up the readme and create a section called list. Oops, and we'll just create a, a bolted list where um, what do we need to do? Um, we need to take out the trash. We need to feed the cat. And we need to water the plants. So those are just some things. I mean, you know, this could be a markdown file like I have here. This could be any file that you're working on collaboratively in uh, a project setting, certainly code files as well. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to add that change. And if we look at get status, we can see it's added. And so I'm going to say git commit. And here we can just say adding a list of things to do. So we'll add that and we'll push that up. Fantastic. And if I do a refresh here, we should see that. That's great. So now we've kind of created this foundation for dealing with this question. So now what I want to do is create a branch. You can use the switch command for that, or probably the more familiar thing is checkout dash b and my feature branch is what we'll call it. Great, we're on a branch. If we say git log, we can see here's the first commit, here's the commit we just made, and now both the main branch and my feature branch, as well as head, are pointing at this commit. So we're at the point in this flow where we've just checked out onto C, and that matches what we have on the main branch as C as well. So now I'm going to do some work to create a some changes here. So I'll say, well, I also need to, I don't know, it snowed a lot, so we'll shovel some snow. That's great. I'll save that. Add that change. 
and we'll go ahead and commit it. Add another thing, thing to do. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and push this branch up. So that's going to be up there. I could click through this link, but I believe also if I open up here, GitHub recognizes that and I can now create a pull request. So again, we're setting up the scenario that the person was talking about in this Reddit thread. And yeah, I don't have much more to say there. We'll create the pull request. Great. And now this is hanging out, looking to be merged. Maybe we're waiting for somebody to review our changes. And now, um, Let's go ahead and so say git log, and I'm going to add the graph flag so we can see this happening. You can see that main is still back here on the commit that we last made on the main branch, and now my feature branch is ahead on this commit. So take note of those things. And so, anyway, someone comes along, uh, one of our collaborators, and they Go ahead and make some changes to the README. And so we'll simulate that by making some changes remotely here. And I'm going to add something in. I need to also um, do a load of laundry. So I'll add that in. And then let's see, add laundry to the list. And then we'll create that commit. We're going to create it directly on main. Normally you'd go through some sort of feature branch and PR workflow, but we're just trying to simulate this real quick. Commit the changes. Okay, so that's there. If we go to um, back out to playground and we go to commits, where are the commit? there we go, commits. We can see we have these three commits here. And so I'm going to rerun this git log graph, and nothing's changed here because that uh, most recent commit is only on the remote. So um, now, now that I'm back in the shoes of this person working on their feature branch, um, I imagine having looked on GitHub and seen like, oh, there's new changes on the main branch. So I check out the main branch. It even tells me right here, this is uh, behind by one commit. So what I do is I say git pull rebase, and that's gonna pull everything down. And it's just that one line change. And so again, if I run git log graph, I can see main is pointing to this latest thing. And if I get check out the feature branch, and using this dash here allows me to check out the most recent branch that I had checked out. So that'll put me back in my feature branch. And if I say git log graph again, we see that we have still just our feature branch, but we're missing the latest on, on the main branch. So how do I get that latest onto here? Well, I can run git rebase, and then the name of the branch that I want to, uh, that has some changes that I want to integrate rebase into my current branch. So I'll do git rebase main, and we run into a git conflict. And that's fine. This, um, this example that I set up was sort of intended to create that situation. Uh, a lot of times a, a git rebase like this will run fine because changes are disparate and they don't overlap. But in this case, let's uh, take a look at the conflict that we're dealing with. So I'm going to say git status to see where it is. We can see it's in the readme file. So let's go ahead and say, um, open up the readme, and we can see these conflict markers. And so in the one case, the, the uh, main branch has this line coming in, and I have this line coming in, and they're overlapping. And that's where, what's the, what the conflict is. So Resolving a conflict is very contextual. You have to know um, what the document or the code needs to do. Um, in my case, I want to keep my to-do and also integrate the new to-do. So I'm going to get rid of these lines and just uh, leave both of 
these both of these new to dos and side by side and maybe actually I want uh, shovel snow to go first so I'll put that there so I can write that change and if I say get log or whoops if I say get status again I can see this is still considered as an unmerged path but now that I've resolved the conflict I can say git add and then the name of that file that's been resolved and now if I say git status again I can see that this is ready uh, to go and so I can continue my rebase so I'll go ahead and grab that line git rebase continue it was able to finish applying the rebase and now everything should be good to go and if I say git log we can see main is still back here but this is now a part of the history of this branch so I can push those changes up to my to my uh, pull request here so this is the pull request I'm dealing with and yeah but before I push those up I did just want to show that um, because of the changes to the main branch we're now in a situation where RPR is in a conflict so that's the conflict we just resolved but the remote on github doesn't yet know about that which is why we had to resolve those uh, locally and so i've resolved them but now we're in a situation where the uh, changes that we've made are um, sort of inconsistent with what's on the remote so we've taken our feature branch which is our personal branch that only we're working on and we've made the changes that we needed to resolve the conflict and knowing that we can run a, do a um, force with le force with lease and this allows us to sort of overwrite what's on our feature branch with the changes that we've made locally now using force and force with lease you need to use that with care make sure you're only using that on branches that just you were using or where you know it's safe certainly never do this on uh, any sort of shared or main branch. So I'm gonna do that push again. It's gonna push through this, this the reason it got rejected. Those changes are gonna go up. And now uh, we don't even need to refresh the page. GitHub recognized it. The conflict has gone away and we're now green to merge if, if we're ready to do that. So that's the workflow that I like to do. Just to uh, review again, I will, you know, Check out the main. I'll pull down the latest changes with git pull rebase. Then I'll go back to the feature branch that I'm working on and I'll git rebase main to bring those latest changes onto my feature branch. And then if there happen to be merge conflicts, I address those, push up the changes, and continue. So that's my preferred way to keep my feature branches up to date, and I hope this sort of visual walkthrough is helpful. Thanks for watching.